Ghostbusters, the Proton Pack. The Proton Pack is the most powerful tool that the Ghostbusters carry on a daily basis. Equipped with a power source that has a half-life of 5,000 years, it's not prone to running out of power. In Ghostbusters 2, however, it must be recharged at all times. The Proton Pack is an unlicensed nuclear accelerator backpack that consists of raw nuclear energy and protons. The Proton Pack is mounted onto an Army Issue Alice Pack, which has adjustable shoulder straps and kidney straps. The Proton Pack consists of two parts. The Nuclear Accelerator Backpack, which is the Proton Pack, Positron Collider and Cyclotron, and the Particle Thrower, the Proton Gun, Iron Wand, Iron Cannon and Neutral Wand. Once you turn the Proton Pack on, you can switch on the Particle Thrower. The Accelerator accelerates the Protons from the Cyclotron into the Particle Thrower, and then you get an extremely powerful but destructive Particle Stream that consists of Protons and raw nuclear energy. This is capable of entangling a ghost against its will. An excellent way to think of the Particle Stream will be as a lasso for ghosts. All ghosts are made up of psychokinetic energy, which consists of electrons, neutrons, and the infaminous substance known as ectoplasm. The electron is one of three elements of an atom, the other two being the proton and the neutron. Electrons carry a negative charge, as does ectoplasm, whereas a neutron has no charge and a proton has a positive charge. Negative energy is no way a match for positive energy, so when a person fires the particle stream at the ghost, the ghost will be entangled in the stream and then will become trapped. Unless the spirit is more powerful and so the power in the stream will have to be increased accordingly. The particle thrower also features a control for the stream length. This proves invaluable when tracking a ghost that floats. The proton pack can disintegrate a paper cup, cut through steel, chop down big trees and blast it down. The particle stream is harmless to humans on low power. It was later discovered that particle streams could be adjusted to simulate sunlight in order to vaporise vampires. The proton pack has two settings. Setting 1. Attack. Expressly designed to weaken an entity's psychokinetic energy and is a connection to our time-space continuum. It's referred to as ectopresence. Setting 2. Confinement. This generates a positive charge cage around the entity being confined. However, the confinement only effective if the entity's ectopresence has been reduced to zero. Otherwise, it can easily break down the confinement stream. Once confined, standard procedure is to capture the entity in a ghost trap. Safety precautions. These are two warnings about the proton pack that should be taken very seriously. Number one, don't cross the streams. This process is extremely dangerous as it causes total protronic reversal. This would result in molecules of a nearby person exploding at the speed of light. Information on this situation is sketchy because of the rarity of it happening. Number two, do not let the pack overheat. This in some ways is similar to total protonic reversal. However, on a more limited scale. However, it's extremely dangerous and it is rare for a person in the vicinity to survive a blast due to overheating. A standard radius of destruction from four proton packs has been estimated at quarter of a mile. There are 20 seconds at its maximum boost before the proton packs overload. The science of the Ghostbusters upgraded proton pack. In practical terms, the Proton Pack is a miniature particle accelerator that enslaves negatively charged ectoplasmic entities in a positively charged proton beam. Try and say in that quickly. <laughs> the term Proton Pack is not used in the original movie at all. It was originally described as a positron collider. It was not until the subway tunnel scene in the second movie that the word's actually used. So let's look at the physics behind the proton pack and see whether it is possible to build one. As Maxwell points out, the original Ghostbusters proton pack, as designed by Dr. Egon Spengler, was a cyclotron. This was the earliest types of particle accelerators ever developed. The device invented by Ernest O. Lawrence in 1932 works by accelerating charged particles along a spiral path. 
Back then, cyclotrons were the most powerful particle accelerators around until they were replaced with the more advanced cyclotrons back in the 1950s. Although these are still used today in some of the first stages of the particle accelerators. In a cyclotron, a charged particle is injected into the middle of the chamber, where it is accelerated between two D-shaped electrodes, or Ds. In the case of a Ghostbusters proton pack, that charged particle is a positron, or positively charged electron. The magnetic field passing through the Ds bends the particle's path, making it travel in a circle. While the electric field between the Ds accelerates the particle, giving it a kick to make it go faster. When the positron beam has enough energy, it strikes a metal target to release a beam of protons. The kick the particle gets from the electric field is very similar to a parent pushing a child on a swing. If a parent pushes at just the right moment, the child gains more energy and swings higher and higher. Instead of having one parent push him from behind, there's also an adult in front who pushes in the opposite direction. If the parent in front also pushes at the right moment and does not get hit in the face, the child will gain more energy and continue to swing higher and higher. Just as a child on the swing in our example gets two pushes, the positron gets two kicks. It gets one kick as it passes through the gap but as it circles back and passes through the D in the opposite direction, the electric field switches direction to give it another kick. This was a significant advance over previous particle accelerators. Previous accelerators, or LANX, just accelerated particles along straight lines. Inside the cyclotron, the magnetic field bends the beam, making it curve back on itself, so it could pass through the gap where it could be accelerated multiple times. As the particle gains more energy, it spirals outwards. When the particles reach the rim, they exit the Ds through a small gap to hit a metal target located at some point behind the rim of the chamber. This creates secondary particles. In this case, protons, the positively charged particle found in the nucleus of an atom. These may be guided outside the cyclotron and into the instruments for analysis. Proton beams look nothing like in the movie. They travel in straight lines. In the movies, they seem to whip out and undulate wildly. This is probably done for visual effect. The proton pack upgrade the cyclotron. The size of the accelerator is not the only practical consideration here. As the positron spirals outwards, it needs to sync up with each kick of the cyclotron resonant frequency. This is the time it takes for the particle to complete a circle and depends on the strength of the magnetic field or the electric charge and mass. If the particles go fast enough to approach the speed of light, its mass increases. More effects come into play. This changes the cyclotron resonance and the beam goes out of phase with the oscillating electric field. The particle beam no longer gets the kick at the right time. The classic cyclotron is therefore only capable of accelerating particles up to a few percent of the speed of light. To get even higher energy particles, the cyclotron solves this problem by varying the strength of the magnetic field. As the speed increases, so does the magnetic field, increasing the moving out of the spiral. As the speed increases, so does the magnetic field. Instead of moving out in a spiral, the changing magnetic field exerts a greater force on the faster moving particle to keep it along the same circular path. This means that the proton pack seen in the reboot is a far more powerful accelerator. But the science doesn't stop there. To make all this possible, Ghostbusters have to find a way to generate the much stronger magnetic fields needed to keep the charged particle moving in a circular path about the size of a backpack. To do this, they turn to superconductors and cryogen systems to generate these magnetic fields and a more powerful magnet to keep it compact. To get the intense magnetic fields to make a cyclotron work, the proton pack uses superconducting magnets. The resistance of these metals becomes lower as they are cooled but superconductors are special. At certain critical temperature, their resistance falls to zero. This means that an electric current flowing through a loop of superconducting wire can persist indefinitely without a power source. 
This allows superconductors to handle much larger currents than the metallic conductors to produce more intense magnetic fields. To achieve this, superconducting magnets need to be cold at cryogenic temperatures. The new proton pack needs a cryogen system, possibly using helium to keep the superconductors at approximately minus 269.15 degrees Celsius or a minus of 452.47 Fahrenheit. This keeps the superconductors at the temperatures they need to be in order to handle the large currents needed to generate the intense magnetic fields for the cyclotron. Crossing the streams, does the science measure up? Paul Fegg made a lot of effort to make sure the science in Ghostbusters seemed realistic as possible as we see from the Proton Pack's blueprints. Maxwell points out in the video that while the science behind the Proton Pack is sound, there are limitations. For one, it is not possible to actually build a cyclotron particle accelerator into an actual backpack. The technical considerations, e.g. the intense magnetic fields to make this thing work, are not practical. One of the most interesting challenges was the show's science advisors, was trying to figure out how actually science and technology could influence prop design, hopefully layering real physics into an awesome science fiction based ghost fighting weapon will do the same when the new Ghostbusters comes out, and to capture a generation of scientists like it did with James Maxwell. To find out more, click on our blog at www.sandstoneproductions.co.uk or also follow us at martymcfly.co.uk